Allegiance. Picard is mysteriously kidnapped and replaced by an imposter. We see Picard relaxing in his room when the monolith from 2001 appears over him and all this weird electricity flashes and he disappears. His chair looks like it would be uncomfortable and hard to balance in. You'd probably spend most of your time trying to stay upright rather than do whatever you're doing in the chair. <laughs> I thought it was different that within the first minute of this episode, the main plot is thrown at us and the crew is aware of it just as soon. I agree. I was surprised at how quickly it jumped into things. However, when Data says he detects something strange and Worf goes to check it out, they don't really get back to that until the script says they're supposed to. Picard wakes up in a weird room and immediately goes to choke one of the other people in the room. It's alright, it's alright. I'm not gonna hurt you. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> there are two other aliens in the cell. One of them is an academy cadet named Haro, the other one is a guy named Thol. In the cell, there's also food bars that got dropped off by the Snowpiercer train. Still hot. Wow, look at them all. Edible. But I wouldn't call it food. Back on the Enterprise, the fake Picard goes to the bridge and starts giving weird orders while the music tells us to be worried. There will be no further communication off this ship without my prior authorization. Come on, now, may I have a word with you? They've already dealt with alien bugs taking over people and Picard being replaced by that energy being earlier. I would be on guard all the time at this point if I were part of the Enterprise crew. Meanwhile, real Picard is spending his time trying to figure out any clues to what's going on, and they're then joined by a guy in a dumb Halloween mask. Whose name is Esach. I thought it was weird that Picard knew the exact species of this guy immediately from a mission he had 12 years ago. I visited there 12 years ago while commanding the Stargazer. I think I'd remember meeting guys who had such a weird face and teeth even less practical than the Ferengi. Fake Picard keeps being weird up on the Enterprise. It's funny to me that he's trying to preemptively mitigate any concerns, but he goes out of his way to pull each bridge officer aside individually and be as weird as he possibly can. Back in the cell, the prisoners explore cultural differences, and as usual their depictions are a bit simplistic, but it is still a huge improvement over how stupidly the subject has been handled in the past. I like how Thal talks about how his race, the Miserians, are peaceful with no enemies, but he's an egotistical dick. It's well known that my species possesses superior intelligence, and uh, I am considered among the brightest of my people. <laughs> They're also working together to try and get out of the room, and it's not going so well. The fake Picard asks Beverly to have dinner with him. And he tells her, but I'm glad you're back on the Enterprise. So we know that's a lie, because he's the fake Picard. That should have alerted her immediately. <laughs> <laughs> they talk, then they dance, then they make out, and then he says, Perhaps we should call it a night. Fake Picard then goes to 10 forward, and his wave as he enters is so good. Captain. He buys drinks for everyone, but we already know that they don't use currency, so why are they all so happy? I think they were more surprised than happy. Picard's entire 10 forward scene was so goofy. Come cheer up, my lads, tis to glory we steer. To find something new in this wonderful year to honor we call The bridge officers have a meeting to discuss how weird Picard is being, and after pointing out all of their experiences, Worf says, It is not enough evidence to justify mutiny. But nobody said they had to go that far? Just get him in a room and ask him? Then Data finally brings up the weird energy reading from earlier. Riker approaches Picard, but he does it in the most confrontational and aggressive way possible, and his questions are rebuffed by a straight-up threat. And I am willing to let the matter drop if you will report to sickbay for full examination. Otherwise, I will have to relieve you from duty. Back in the cell, everyone there is starting to suspect everyone else of working with their mysterious captors, and they kind of go in a circle, shifting suspicion around between everyone. Picard has his suspicions about what's going on, but he continues to keep it to himself for no reason other than the episode isn't over yet. At one point, Haro speaks up for Picard, and I like that she mentions the Mintakans from the episode Who Watches the Watchers. The primitive culture on Mintaka 3? The Wagner creatures in the Auric Nebula? He then adds another incident to his list of heroic achievements, and the camera gets suspiciously close to his face. 
Back on the Enterprise, the fake Picard puts the crew in immediate danger by ordering the Enterprise to get too close to a pulsar, which would expose them to intense radiation. So Riker takes command away from him. The real Picard determines that their abduction is an experiment to test their reactions to strenuous scenarios, and he calls out Haro. It's a laboratory maze, a carefully structured test. It's an experiment to see how well we react under pressure. Starfleet has classified the core Caroli 5 plague a secret. No cadet would have knowledge of that incident. Haro then pulls a raid in and turns into energy things that separate into three aliens. The aliens, a race called the Deus Ex Machinas, <laughs> <laughs> reveal that they just study whatever the f they feel like without any explanation other than we just study whatever the f we feel like. <laughs> And because this episode has gone on long enough with all this dumb shit happening, Picard gives it the final kick out the window by saying, We now know of your race, and we know how to imprison you. Bear that in mind. Now get off my ship. So none of it matters, and it won't ever come up again. The end. <laughs> I do like how they capture the aliens on the bridge to show them what it's like, but it's a useful ability they could have taken advantage of before, and I'm sure they'll never use it again. And to really show how weak this episode is, we get a throwback to season one music when Beverly sits down next to Picard because she doesn't know it was fake Picard that was macking on her earlier. Engage. Allegiance. Overall? It's apparent that you didn't like this episode. I thought it was okay. I like the overall concept. It felt very Twilight Zone-esque to me. The stuff with the fake Picard was a little bit tedious, given that they've basically dealt with the same situation multiple times already. You would think at this point they would have some kind of procedure in case something like this happens again. They don't even try to contact Starfleet and say, hey, Picard's acting weird. But the stuff with the real Picard in the cell, I thought was okay. I liked the interactions between everyone and the way they all had legitimate reasons for suspecting each other. I would give this episode a C plus. I give it a D for dumb. <laughs> it was a more experimental episode with the whole one room thing. I also felt like it was very much a Twilight Zone episode. It was a potentially interesting concept, but it seems like they were writing it as they went along, dangling the sense of mystery to string us along, acting like there was gonna be some big payoff, but then realizing at the end they didn't actually have a way to end it and there was no payoff. So instead just having everyone decide that none of it mattered. I thought they were out there to discover new life and new civilizations, not get irritated and boot them back out into space saying, would you just leave us alone? The parts I liked the most were how weird fake Picard was being. I really want to know what Patrick Stewart was thinking when he read the script and as he was actually performing those scenes. Part of the reason why this one was such a small set was because yesterday's Enterprise took up a lot of the budget, but that doesn't mean that a small set story has to be poor writing. I did not enjoy it very much, especially after coming off of Sins of the Father, which was so good. Three men as three, for who are so free as the sons of the waste? Are the whole ship 